Saturday mind emission on the toad cam. Question. What's missing? What's going missing? What skill or skill set do we need now more than ever? What is the critical central component in the learning process and the teaching process that seems to be evaporating from the culture around us? A major problem. And the problem is occurring because new technologies, the communication technologies, the technologies, internet based technologies, uh, telephonic technologies, connectionist technologies of all different kinds have emerged with such rapidity and have completely saturated the culture so completely and so rapidly that we really haven't had time to think about the medium to long-term consequences of adopting these technologies. It is now appearing that there are some severe consequences. I saw the New York Times five days ago or so and there was an, a large article, a two full page article, which is very large for the New York Times, discussing the bizarre addictive effects of using the various pads, pods, phones, blue teeth, all those sorts of things, had completely altered the way a family operated. They were, they were so connected to their electronic stuff in an, in an addictive way, they had quite a hard time relating to each other. This has definitely flowed into the style of the way people communicate with each other, in the, the tweet style. Um, so succinct, so compressed, and sometimes it's handy to have that, that discipline to get a very, very succinct, compressed message across. But what has uh, clearly been displaced in all this is the ability to develop ideas, to take an idea and give it um, an expansion, to expand on an idea and to take it through multiple stages of development, take it down different paths, experiment with different outcomes, try different kinds of thought strategies and thought processes, test different hypotheses, add, um, add different inputs, delete certain inputs, that, that long, rich process of working through a, an idea, working through a thought, is rapidly disappearing and it's simply being replaced with a, a thought burp, a little blip of a thought when it needs a much more, uh, much more expanded development, more taking different possibilities, experimenting with different possible futures, different possible worlds. And I'm sure that type of thinking, that very careful, deliberate, developmental thinking of ideas is being preserved and being conserved and developed and refined in the elite, the people who will be the leaders, the people who will control the capital, those people who will become the dominant, wealthy, trend-setting um, class of society are probably, I'm saying certainly, probably my foot, certainly being trained in the art of careful, iterative, expansive, developmental processes around ideas. If you are not going to be part of that elite, if you're not going to be admitted into that world, chances are very good you will be consigned to the world of, of little thought burps and thought ideas. And that's quite unfortunate because this is a, a skill set, this is a capacity which is necessary for everyone. At, at every stage, at every level, people need to know how to think things through. If you want to put it in the simplest terms, how do you think things through? How do you take an idea and think it through three, four, five, six possible levels deep of, of potential outcomes and potential consequences? 
and build really, really clear, firm models of what you're thinking about and what you're talking about and be able to discuss them at some length coherently and put them down on paper. One strategy among many is um, discussed in this book, Idea Mapping, Access Your Hidden Brain Power, Learn Faster, Remember More, and Achieve Success in Business. Idea Mapping, Jamie Nast, there's your Idea Mapping book, Better Light on It. And Idea Mapping contains multiple maps of ideas. There are uh, lots of interesting illustrations in here of how various ideas were mapped out. Now, I don't think that the idea map is the only means of getting there and necessarily the best means. It is one way to approach it. There's a really fancy one there. That's quite a map. And when I look at these maps often, I don't have um, any particular idea why they're necessary or, or what advantage is provided because so much of that stuff is sort of encoded um, encoded at the time and it's it's in a shorthand so I, I couldn't translate that shorthand looking at one of those idea maps into some kind of plan for action but I do think that idea mapping is a is a skill and an art that we should be teaching and NLP should be teaching uh, as part of understanding people's reality strategies and their action strategies. And we really don't do that. That's one of the, the grave deficiencies of NLP is it breaks things down into little, um, little sort of tactical maneuvers without looking at the larger strategic picture of how all these maneuvers fit into a pattern for some kind of development or for some kind of uh, outcome. So I'm going to put in my little um, vote here for idea mapping. I think we should do a lot of idea mapping and get very good at idea mapping and practice it. Um, the area, the little sub area of modeling called knowledge engineering definitely broaches that, that idea of idea mapping. And I, knowledge engineering or KE modeling is the only one I know of that speaks to idea mapping as a, as a legitimate component of NLP. Idea mapping is very important. And uh, I think once you get a handle on it, once idea mapping becomes part of your uh, part of your sort of preparatory work, even if you do it in your own mind before you engage in a conversation and you're thinking you can map that conversation as you go through it, you will be at a tremendous advantage both in, in your capacity to express yourself and you will have a tremendous advantage in your capacity to understand and map out what other people are saying and give it some kind of internal structure. That's sort of a hidden layer in there. That's sort of like down in the submodality layer, you might say, but it's a very important hidden layer. And I, I can clearly distinguish in my mind between those people who implicitly idea map and those people who have not developed the art of implicit sort of infraconscious or preconscious idea mapping. They're like two different types of mind almost, like two, two very, very different types of um, ability to grapple with reality and make some uh, constructive use of it. So this is a this is a very very brief little um, little egg on and brief little uh, proposal that we 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 do idea mapping and we get very good at it because if we don't do it and we don't get good at it if we're if we're deficient in that capacity to map out ideas explicitly on some kind of substrate like paper um, and develop a, a, a sort of a discipline for doing that we will we will never really get past a certain point of structural mastery of what we're doing so um, and I can't tell you for sure that just by buying idea mapping just by getting this book and reading it and taking that in will automatically change you you probably will need a very strong course taught by a very uh, a proficient teacher that